My Hero Academia. Okay, so hello and welcome to the My Hero Academia podcast. This is episode 86. Today I am here. My name is Sophie, and here with me is James. Hello. <laughs> and also Gary. Hi there. So today we have a few bits of news. And then we will go through completely spoiler free anime episode 79 and then uh, manga chapter 259 before following up with one email. Just as a pre warning, I'm a little bit ill, so I apologize for any sniffling that you may hear. Okay, and on to the news, Gary. Well, let's see. First, we have the illustration for the single for the opening theme star maker by kind of boom and um, that features a group of the students riding a shooting star um with kind of like a rainbow trail and then in the background we have um aoyama blasting with his <laughs> jelly laser blast as he sparkles and Mineta is riding his back crying he's so and, good Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like the best part of the image. Also, we have um, Jiro is playing the guitar, and Todoroki has a handful of little baby stars, too. Yeah, he's just collecting them. <laughs> and Sue is grabbing one with her tongue. And Yeah, then Bakugo looks like he's going to like blast Midoriya for no reason. <laughs> that's kind of typical. Yeah, I like this image though. It's nice. Yeah, it's light and fluffy. It reminds me of like the old "The more you know." You know yeah, I was gonna part. say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you were gonna say "Great minds think like me." Kind of. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, another news we saw. The the other time we got like that image from Horikoshi that he was kind of doing illustrations that were kind of like tied to the movies in a way, and we saw that Bakugo finally punched the uh, Deku son, <laughs> and in comes the Todoroki moon. And then this week we see that Deku is holding the two kids from the Heroes Rising movie, and then we see Bakugo again flying, and he's gonna punch the moon this time. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Who predicted it? I think Kendra's the one that predicted Kendra it. Mm. Yeah. Well done. And then Welcome. I posted, yeah, and then I posted in the group chat that like a, the image from a trip to the moon where the moon gets hit in the eye. <laughs> but what's gonna happen if the moon goes away? Is the are the tides gonna go crazy or tsunamis? Tsunamis. <laughs> But Bakugou has some issues with the sun and the moon for some reason. I hope we do find out what's wrong with them. And, oh, uh-huh. Anti-luminary. Anti-luminary, so it's going to be darkness. <laughs> but uh, we also have Horikoshi's comment for this week, and it's, uh, I always get the request for the table of contents and reply with, here are my comments for the back of the magazine, and send it over. Neither side wants to change the routine. <laughs> And, <laughs> as well, we also have uh, a crossover with uh, Ichiro Oda from One Piece. He states, Horikoshi Sensei and I did a shiny trade with our Black Rayquazas at the New Year's party. He says, sorry, mine didn't get strong. So they're both best pals and they both play Pokemon Go. <laughs> Do any of y'all play Pokemon Go? No. I did. And then I got lazy. Same. <laughs> I got lazy when I found out I had to go outside and travel. <laughs> uh, I would drive around town trying to find all the Pokestops, and then whenever I would go like on vacation, I would try to catch whatever was there. But then I'm like, this is boring. This isn't as fun as real like the real Pokemon game. <laughs> so it did not work out for me. No. Gary, did you uh, have another bit of news? Yeah. Um... There was announced a new character for the My Hero Wants Justice 2 game, and that is Rappa, one of the Jiha Saikai members that fought famously Kurishima. 
And that brings it up to 40 characters now, which I thought it was only going to be 40 characters, but I'd be surprised if we didn't get a couple more. Yeah. Namely, I think, I don't know, I'm thinking Hawks and Gentle. But I bet you there'll be DLC down the line or something. I think so. It could be. <laughs> yeah, because 40, 40 characters is a pretty full roster. I mean, if, yeah, it is. It's a lot of characters to choose from. Yeah, I'm happy about that. I think they added 15 to the original 25, so that's quite uh, a bit more. Wow. I hope the, they're not um, sacrificing on qual- qual- quality and yeah. going for quantity. Um, I will say Bandai, when it comes to games, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, it depends on the quality of their series. Like, they'll give big quality to, like, the Dragon Ball Z games, but like for every other game, it's just it lacks a little bit in quality. To say I'm not trying to sound like I'm not trying to be negative about it or nothing, but it's just like you can tell the difference of what properties they care about more. I guess you could say. Mm. Being well, one that I... has played plenty of Bandai games. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. I look, yeah, I look forward to playing as the characters more than anything so Mm -hmm. well i will say that the play um i mean graphics aside the uh game mechanics are actually pretty good like that's one thing that matters a lot too as well in a video game is how playable is it or how like is it how easy it is to get into it and i will say that yeah the game mechanics for uh the first one just as were pretty solid cool and so that is all we have for the news and so into the anime Woot. Woo. Okay, so we're on episode 79 of the anime. Chapter, the, the title is Win Those Kids Hearts. It covers chapter 164 through the first three pages of chapter 166 of the manga. And in the very beginning of the episode before the theme, it's just a rehashing of um anasa and kami joining todoroki and bakugo and so then after the theme we see anasa and todoroki walking together and anasa asks todoroki what he likes and he says he likes soba cold in the basket and anasa lets out a huh and says he likes his soba hot prefers udon so then todoroki says that they're not compatible Then Anasa feels like they've gotten closer, but Todoroki tells him he doesn't have to force friendship. And then we have, like, Bakugo watching on, and he's like, I don't like it, or something like that. I'm like, what in the world? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know if he doesn't like it because he's, like, not involved, or he just doesn't like the neediness of it, but... (laughs) Yeah, he doesn't like anything, really, I don't know. (laughs) He's probably just jealous that other people have friends, although he does have friends. Okay, then we move over to Mira, the sleepy agent guy, and he explains that they've rented the General Sports Center for the exam, and then we see All Might, President Mike, and Endeavor enter to take their seat to watch the exam. Then Endeavor shouts to Todoroki to show the others that he's better than them. And then the other exam takers note Endeavor, and then, then they see All Might. Anasa flashes back to Endeavor pushing him when he wanted his autograph. He's bitter about that still. And the Mm -hmm. other students get starstruck, especially by All Might. Then Mira tells them to calm down, and he introduces Kami, explaining that her memory is foggy about what happened at the last uh, license exam as to why she couldn't participate. Then... I can't remember his name, though, but Meat and his <laughs> instructor recap Kami not being able to take the prior exam because Toga took her place, which we get a little bit of a flashback of that. Mm-hmm. Then Gang Orca comes in and chastises the exam retakers, and he says that they're lower than ocean bottom feeders and that they're the Gobi fish turds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, then he confronts Bakugo asking if he wants to be a hero and Bakugo says he's not a turd so then (laughs) (laughs) then says Gang Orca yells disciplinary action and tosses Bakugo aside (laughs) 
<laughs> then he asks Todoroki how turds can help humanity, and Todoroki begins with indirectly through fertilization. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gang Orca tosses him aside and yells, disciplinary action. And then something similar with Anasa, where he asks Anasa, um, I can't remember what he asked him. I didn't write that quite down. But anyway, same thing happens. He yells disciplinary action and tosses him aside. So then he notes that those three have combat ability, but their attitudes are what hold them back. And then he stresses the importance of rescuing people. Then he introduces those three and Cammy. Well, Cammy wonders why she's being included with them. Uh, introduces them to the Masageki elementary school students. And they are very rambunctious children. And they're running around <laughs> creating a scene. <laughs> and through the chaos, Bakugo notes a kid monologuing to the side about how adults yelling all the time, expecting that to get them what they want. Uh -huh. And then Todoroki is surrounded by boys who say that part of his hero equipment looks like a wee-wee. <laughs> <laughs> that whole he, scene. Yeah, I know. And then when he explains that they aren't wee-wees, they attack him, calling him five wee-wee man. <laughs> then <laughs> Anasa is being punched in the legs by kids calling him a jerk as he silently stands and looks on at his <laughs> I loved how he was just getting punched just like and he's just yeah. like standing there like not even acknowledging that he's getting punched by these kids <laughs> so yeah, like... <laughs> and so anyway he thinks he looks on at an endeavor and he thinks he'll never be like him and then we see like a lingering shot of endeavor in the audience yeah, and after that, Inasa gets pummeled by the kids because he's like, oh no, I looked away. <laughs> <laughs> and Kami asks herself, like, why is she part of this group? And Gang Orca explains that she was an exception, that they couldn't see her in the initial exam and that she wouldn't be, be good at this either. <laughs> he kind of tells her and then insults her in the same, like, sentence. But as that happens, Kami hugs a kid and the kid gets a face full of boob. <laughs> Well, Kami explains that she likes kids anyways, and one of the girls pinches her butt. They're saying, like, don't seduce show. Ignore her. Ignore her. Ignore her. <laughs> and Kami says, like, she's she's like, she's seriously at that age already? <laughs> and the teacher is apologizing while we see the kids still being rowdy. Gang Orca tells her not to worry. that. And when, she, when he says that, she calls him Mr. Whale. <laughs> so... Yeah, so Mr. Whale believes that by the end of the day they will change, you know, they will change their class. That he will have all four of the students work together and grasp the hearts of the kids of this class. Bakugo screams out, uh, yelling to, you know, telling him, "Are you telling us to be a nursery school teachers?" And Mr. Whale goes on telling them, "The rest of the team will have a lecture after your practical exercises with my employees, as usual." Attention, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> By the way, I'm referring him to Mr. Well from now on. So, <laughs> But, you know, as you hear noise from the kids, we get shots of the kids and everyone else just, you know, sitting quietly in the stands. And President Mike, you can just tell he cannot contain himself. And he states that his MC spirit has reached its limits. And he says, background music and live reporting. Without them, there is no soul in an event. And all my interjects, well, whether there is or not is, is honestly. And he gets interrupted by President Mike. If it doesn't matter where there is or the, or not, then obviously it'd be better to have them, mighty boy. <laughs> and the next shot, uh, the next shot cuts to President Mike on the gym floor by the, uh, uh, I call the well the event staff, and he has taken the tiny mic and has started live commentary of the event. <laughs> As he is commenting, we see the kids still being rambunctious. KB is trying the friendly route. She's saying like to have some fun, okay, kiddos. And the little girl says, ignore the wonton woman, which I, I looked up like a wonton woman. Describing a wonton woman is like if someone describes a woman as wonton, they disapprove of her because she clearly enjoys sex or has sex with a lot of men. So I was like, oof, this is a really bad word choice. Do you guys not use that word? We don't. The only reason I even know this is because there's a Led Zeppelin song called The Wonton Song, which is about, a you know, a wonton woman. So Yeah, it is like it's like an old english word like a wanton woman yeah, yeah. It's a very i used to read a lot of i used to read a lot of agatha christie so i know 
Oh, okay. See, I was just know because the the Led Zeppelin song. I'm the uncultured swine in this group, but <laughs> but yeah. And after she says that, she just says, "Leave her, leave her." <laughs> so they just like totally ignore her. And we cut to All Might and Endeavor sitting in the stands, and All Might remarks, "You seem to have been considerate of my feelings." And Endeavor pulls out a big old. Oomph. He's like, "So you wanted to talk." Endeavor throws some stats at the spy about the spike in crime and says that it's gone up in three months in the past or three percent in the past month, and that he's had to deal with a lot of those cases. And you can see he was kind of mad about it because he's kind of like gripping his biceps. And he says that he can hear it though, the sound of something unseen that All Might builds up is crumbling away. And he continues to ask him, "What is the symbol of peace?" And that's when we get the ad break, and we find out that Inasa likes passion. <laughs> <laughs> And then we get Endeavors, and he likes uh, Kutsumochi. But after the ad break, uh, we see the kids running away with uh, Bakugo's grenade arm things as he is telling them that it's not a toy for kids. And Todoroki asks if it's okay that, you know, for them to be so easily removed. And Bakugo answers back saying that he took them off because he thought it'd be dangerous, damn it. (laughs) Well, we we tried. (laughs) Yeah, we tried. (laughs) didn't work out and uh, then we cut straight to the little girl that doesn't like Kami going like all feral while Kami says to herself I mean grasp the heart is like super vague <laughs> and she keeps trying to like kind of like get close to that little girl but she turns like a she looks like a feral cat in that scene she's like <laughs> <laughs> in her ponytail is like yeah yeah it's like straight that up. streaks straight up like a cat's tail but like she asks, what are we supposed to do anyway? And we said President Mike has seating himself along with the event staff. <laughs> Only Mara, the teacher, and President Mike are now seated. It seems like the, the other two staffers. And I kind of shorted it. It's the HPSC, which was the hero. <sighs> what was it? Well, anyways, that's the organization that they're part of. The Hero Public Safety Commission. Yes, thank you. But yeah, the other two that were seated there, they left, I guess. But President Mike refers to the hero students as Team Gobi. <laughs> and it looks like they don't know what they're supposed to do. And Mara states that it's fine for him to do this, but that it's still a class. So don't go overboard. And he exclaims, okay, okay. Then he proceeds to Wouldn't move they... the mic. Uh-huh. Sorry, isn't it pronounced Gobi rather than Gobi? Weren't they like Team Gobi? I thought it was Gobi. Like, maybe, I don't know. Oh, I just thought he meant Gobi like when someone is Gobi. I thought they meant goby yeah. like the fish. Yeah, it's fish. Because um, of the goby turds. <laughs> makes much more sense than goby. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, anyways, then he proceeds to move the mic towards the elementary teacher, asking what what they should be doing and what she would like out of this. You know, like, you know, what would you like out of this? She states that the early elementary school years are an important time for building character. Because the difference between quirks has a big effect, and that they offer counseling in order to support healthy emotional development. Meanwhile, we see Bakugo and Todoroki like listening intently as the kids continue to be rowdy. And she continues on, but that counseling is not a cure-all. The children of this class have closed their hearts to them. She understands that it's her responsibility, but if the interactions with the hero students will help them remember their honest feelings. And Todoroki starts by saying, let's stop saying crass things about each other. There's someone in trouble, and he ju- and Nasa jumps in. In other words, we just need to make friends with everyone, right? And Bakugo says, enough with the babysitting. Let's join the other heroes on the other side. And President Mike calls him out and says, you're already being crass, Bakugo. <laughs> and right here, I said that we got Bakugo big, uh, Bakugo big brain time. He thinks the elementary students have a boss who is creating this atmosphere. And Bakugo is like, find that kid. And, you know, Bakugo says... Um, you know, find that kid and Baku, uh, I forgot what Todoroki says something about that too. Oh, Todoroki says and then, and he says beat him up and make him, you know, beat him up and uh, hang him, and to make an example out of it and make the other kids throw rocks at him. <laughs> and it's like the most effective way for him to realize how insignificant he really is. Well, he says that you know he says you know beat him up, throw rocks at him, make him insignificant, and Nasa jumps in. And says, we just need to make friends with everyone, right? <laughs> and President Mike's like, well, Bakugo has put out his opinion. 
And you got more sirens there. But um, Sorry. that's okay. That's not your fault. I muted myself. <laughs> but he says, you know, whoever's the strongest, come out, fight me. And he's like, but it doesn't look like that'll work is with the little kid. The little kid say that that's such an outdated, violent way of thinking. He's just over at the wall, just like kind of like like he's better than everybody, I guess. And he gets kind of on Bakugo's nerve. He's like, you're giving yourself away. And he's like, he's giving himself away. And he's still, and Bakugo's still like saying, enough already. Just come out. And the teacher interjects saying, it might be impertinent to say this, but will it really be all right? And President Mike says, don't worry, this is the sideshow. <laughs> and Kami interjects saying that delinquents aren't fashionable, you know. <laughs> And he says, then make them fashionable is what Bakugo starts saying. And Anasa also jumps in and says, getting to know each other first is the fastest way to becoming friends, which is true. It's not trying to fight each other. And he raises, you know, Anasa raises his hands like, who wants to become a hero? Trying to get the students to kind of relate in a way. And uh, we hear the kids saying, I do. They're cool. I'm super strong, too. And... Says playing with children might be something that Anasa is good at. I believe is uh meat. This isn't what do we call it? Meat, right? <laughs> meat, meat. Yeah, but it, he states that his passion cheers those around him. And he says, "Now this is something to see." And the teacher kind of notes it. Says, "Oh, he started commentary already." And he says, can kids who give their teachers trouble become good heroes? And the kid says, no. And Nas is like, right, in that case. And we get like this in, like this little monologue. This kid looks weird, too. Like, I don't know. He kind of reminds me of like a weird-looking Muriel for some reason. But he says, right, in that case, that since you give all the teachers and say to commission more work by making them run this class, you can't become one either. <laughs> And so he kind of flies away saying, that's true. Like, I don't know if he's falling, but like he drops the kids down and he's just like falling towards the ground. And that should be your go, I believe. Yep. Um, and then Anasa has failed because he is big hearted, but also pure. Bakugo then immediately starts going on about violence again. <laughs> um, but he gives in to Todoroki eventually, who's insisting that there is a better way. We cut back to Endeavor, who tells All Might that he's known the gap between them has been too big for him to scale ever since he re received the number two hero spot, aged just 20. Um, they used the mountain visualization that they did in the manga. I think it was very effective again. He continues saying that all he wants to be is the strongest and nothing will do. Uh -huh. um, all Might says that this isn't like Endeavor to share his feelings, which makes Endeavor very angry, kind of a Bakugo style. All Might quickly says that when he was young, things were much worse than they were now for heroes and people were just scared all the time. And he thought that people needed someone to fully believe in. So he put his all into becoming that person, pushing aside those who cared for him to achieve his aim. We saw All Might before he joined UA, just like running towards his goal, which is another good metaphorical visualization. Um, and he left everyone that cared about him, including Sir Night Eye behind. All Might then finishes by saying that people shouldn't compare the two of them as they're so different and therefore um, Endeavour shouldn't copy the same symbol of peace that All Might was and instead find his own path. We go back to Shoto as he approaches the children. The girls immediately are very eager to listen to this handsome young man, but they quickly change their tune after Kami agrees with them and no one, none of them wants to be like Kami. <laughs> um, so what does Shoto try? He monologues about himself and present Mike says that it's like a character introduction page and it really is. And it's so boring because he just carries on in the same monotone voice. Mm -hmm. Bakugo then immediately picks up and he seems like he's about to start talking about violence. But um, Kari, Kami interrupts him, suggesting that they should use their quirks as like a display instead to try and communicate that with the children. And Buck goes like, yeah, that's my idea too. But I'm sure he meant use their quirks in a very different way. Mm -hmm. um, the group then has like a little huddle. The children are watching their huddle and the clever sassy kid at the start is like, oh, it's not going to work, whatever they do. And we see that all the kids already think that they're stronger. 
than the uh, hero wannabes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they're, they're so arrogant. Um, Mr. Meatballs appears next to present Mike, kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to join in as well. Um, he laments present Mike for not giving the Shiketsu High students enough credit. And he goes on to explain that he doesn't think their plan will work because if they go too hard on the students, they'll just like embarrass them and make them bitter. But mm-hmm. if they're too soft and gentle with them, then the kids will just stay like arrogant little toe rags. Mm-hmm. Uh, the episode then ends with their the like the primary school t- children's teacher genuinely really concerned for our hero's safety. So these kids must have just put her through hell if they're like, oh, no, they'll kill them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor teacher. <laughs> and that is the end of the episode. Woot. I think the... I feel like the in the manga, the chat between All Might and Endeavor is like spread out. But I feel like in the anime over because it's going to be spread out over two episodes ish. I feel like that might have been better to just do. In one episode, does anyone else think that it might just be me nitpicking? Mm, I think it would have actually benefited if it was just in one episode. Because then we're going to have to remember what he said last episode. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they're not afraid of recapping, so. Yeah, they might do that, I guess. That would be quite a good way to. Uh, no, it wouldn't, because it's not a conversation about the children. Uh, Gary, what did you think of the episode? I liked it overall. It had a lot of humorous points, like as I was doing my part of the summary. Like with Gang Orca throwing everyone aside and the five <laughs> wee wee man, <laughs> like pretty ridiculous compared, especially to the overhaul arc. Mhm. I was like, well, I was gonna say that, yeah, I like the funny bits in this episode. This was, I guess, pretty lighthearted compared to overhaul, like you said. And um, let's see what else did I like about it. I didn't like the little jerk kid though. That was just kind of like by himself in the wall, <laughs> just kind of like being like getting on Bakugo's nerve. <laughs> Oh, the uh, sassy ringmaster. Yeah. He reminds me of Monoma. <laughs> I, yeah, it's like a mini Monoma, honestly. <laughs> oh, Monoma monologue. Yeah. Yeah, this episode was just kind of just, I don't know, over, it was over the top funny for me just because a lot of little funny bits in it. And like, just I like the little kid punching Inasa and like Inasa not even like acknowledging that he was getting punched until he looked away. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, I like this episode. <laughs> It was a good palate cleanser, because if you think about it, the only things that really happened was funny stuff. Like, All Might and Endeavor had that little chat, and kids were introduced, and then there were some other bits. It was really good, It was and it was funny. I think it was a much-needed change of pace from the anime. But I don't have a huge amount to talk say about it, really. Okay, so if we're finished with that, then on to the manga. For the manga portion, we're on chapter 259, A Quiet Beginning. And the cover page is... Oh, what's her name? <laughs> I want to say Fumiyaki, but that's not right. It's for you, me. I, kept, I didn't realize I had my microphone on mute, and I was going, for you, me. It's for you, oh. me. And then being like, why, why can no one hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, for you, me. Sorry, I keep forgetting your name. There was a bunch of people cosplaying her at the last con I went. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then she's walking to a home. Natsuo is greeting her. And then there's a woman in the back with like big mouth ears. I thought that was Ray, but she doesn't have big mouth ears. So I don't know what that's about. Yeah, I thought that was. Um, first of all, I thought that might be his mum, but she looks quite young. So it's, ev- yeah. so it's either like it's one of their friends or it could be Natsuo's um, girlfriend. Love interest, yeah. Okay, so it's pretty plain. Uh, this, the next this oh, sorry, house oh sorry this house looks quite different to the house they had before like the house they had before was in that huge plot of land and in the back quite right. closely you can see another building so i wonder if this is they're like if endeavor already bought them like a new separate house because this looks quite different mm-hmm. yeah he must have though because like three months or so have gone by since that incident where he said he was going to buy them a house or build them a house in yeah. the city so 
I'm guessing that's where they are. I feel like that's still impressively quick for a mortgage and everything to go through, or just buying it off the bat. Well right, done. Well, mm-hmm. He's the number one hero, right? <laughs> so. He probably also paid it straight out and just paid like the all the yeah. fees and stuff. He can afford he the best solicitors. Got, he's yeah. got money to burn. Mm-hmm. But I'm <laughs> Those windows at the front... <laughs> I'm just a bit too much about this cover page. Those windows at the front are beautiful. If they have those in their back garden, that would be really nice to see it and watch the birds. Um. Okay, so the next page we have the doctor. And we, is this a new reveal of his name, Maruta Shika? Because he was yeah. going by like Duruma for a while. Mm-hmm. That must have been a code name. Okay, so it says it says his name and then says he's quirkless so that's a big reveal too because we mm-hmm. didn't know that um he's described as the founder of jaku general hospital and current chairman of the board and we see him walking through the halls of the hospital and there's yeah. a sign behind him that says outpatient reception slash pediatrics jaku is a host is a star wars thing isn't it is it yeah <sighs> yeah is it a sad Ray. star wars thing it's ray's planet or it's the planet where they find ray and that's uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, like, um, why does everybody want to go back to Jakku General Hospital? Because like a part of that movie, everybody wants to go back to Jakku except for Finn, and he's like, why does everybody want to go back to Jakku? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I watched too much Force Awakens. Yeah, you're fine. I watched it a couple times, but yeah, I re- I've seen it like I want to say at least twenty times. <laughs> it's my wow. favorite out of the trilogy. Is it? Yeah. yeah, out of the new trilogy, anyways. Okay, so to avoid a long rant on Star Wars, but <laughs> <laughs> the next panel says he promoted community based medicine rooted in quirk. And after founding the hospital, he devoted his time and energy to charitable works. He set up orphanages and nursing homes nationwide and all through partnerships with his hospital. And we get, um, outdoor shots of all these facilities that are being described mm-hmm. then um it's a close-up of him again and he's got like a kind of a weird squinty eye on the right side and yeah, he looks like he's pooping <laughs> and yeah and there's like a whistle mark too and it looks like it's coming from his eye as well um <laughs> it, it, he can it, hum from his eyes <laughs> yeah that's sure what it looks like uh, okay, so his past paints him as a whimsical man, but he's earned acceptance and respect from many communities. And then we see a group of heroes all gathered together, as well as the police and the cat officers there, too. And we have Sikachi there directing or speaking with the heroes. Mm-hmm. Among the heroes are Rocklock, Sniper, Endeavor. Um, Gran, Gran Torino, Torino and Wild Wild yeah. What's that? Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to miss Gran Torino. Oh, no, I said him, I think. Uh, Rocklock says, how do we know it's him? And then Sukachi says, uh, I should redo Rocklock. He said, how do we know it's him? There we go, that's better. Then Sukachi says, we had someone go undercover based on a tip from the safety group. They discovered a lockdown area in the hospital, and nobody knew what it was being used for. And then we get a shot of Endeavor. Then Sukachi says it's only accessible via the morgue. Only Shiga himself goes in or out, and our insider managed to get proof. And then there's a picture, and he says this photo, and but we see the doctor entering a room, and then they have a close-up of a tiny Nomu. And it's not Johnny, though. I, I don't believe Mm-mm. it doesn't look like a duck, but it looks like his spine is kind of like his tail. And he's kind of just sitting there smiling at the entrance of the door. And so, um, Pixie Bob says, I was going to say, you kind of just move. skip the, I was going to say, you just skip the mention that he's wearing tiny little shoes as well. Oh, right. <laughs> that's why I was saying, or that's why I was thinking he was like, like Johnny has that too. Oh, Okay. Um, okay, so then Pixie Bob says, an itty bitty Nomu, all like surprised and seemingly disgusted, I guess. And Sukachi says, arresting Maruta Shiga won't be too tricky. However, if we get ahead of ourselves, the Liberation Front will catch wind of it. 
We all remember the traumatic events at, at Hosu and Kamino. Shiga, the Nomu, Shigaraki, and the League of No, the Paranormal Liberation Front. Our mission is to take them all down at once. And think... we have more aerial Ooh. shots of the mountain and a building there. And that's about it. I think that might be Johnny, but like an updated Johnny. Because I'm looking at the old Johnny and he's still got that like tadpole spine. He's got the shoes and he's got his like his brains really on show. And here we can see kind of the top of a brain, but with like they put a skull on this one. I don't know. Maybe they were like Johnny one and then Johnny two. Mm. Brothers. I love, love if all the numbers were actually all just named Johnny. <laughs> oh. Um, and then kind of reminds me of like the clown car that um, Bowser rides in. Oh, it's got the same smile. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then on the next page, we can see a large number of heroes. It's so saying the enemy commanders are all attending a meeting inside that building. And they are being led by um, is it Ed Shot? Yep. Ed Shot, um, Mount Lady is at the front. Cammy Woods is there. Gang Orca, aka Mr. Whale, is there. Um, the pro hero whose name I can't remember, but is like the um, the dwarf, the Gimli, <laughs> Gimli hero, is uh, in front of Fat Gum, who is kind of nuzzling um, Sun Eater on the head. Mushroom, that was really cute. Yeah, Mushroom Girl is there. Yeah. But in, in this picture, I couldn't see... Um, I thought maybe that was Hononuki behind her, but I'm not sure about that. Um, Cementos is also with them. Uh, ooh, who else is there? Miss Joke is there, looking kind of confused. Uh, then Who's that? Oh, sorry. Silky. I noticed someone there. Yeah, <laughs> Silky's there from um, the, the cameo guy. Cameo? Mm-hmm. No, he's not Cameo. He's from... Um, he's from that filler episode. Yes, filler episode. Yeah. That's it. And then also, almost everyone spotted him. Denji from Chainsaw Man. <laughs> yeah. There's, a, there's also a guy that looks like uh, Ganfall from Skypea right next to uh, Fat Gum. I don't know if he has a name. He's right behind Gang Orca. He looks like a samurai. Um, Another one in there, too. Um, kind of toward the back. Uh, I think that's fourth kind, isn't it? The one that oh, Shima and real skill uh, trained with. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. The lion hero on the left. That's kind of a recent one too. Good spot with fourth kind at the back there. Yeah. Yeah. And then Kaminari uh, is on the right, but we yeah, that's yeah. not that big. One. Oh, you could barely see him. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry. Okay, fine. Um, and then we carry on. They're saying that rap quirk is one to be feared. Sorry, that warp quirk is one to be feared. But the one who wields it is in the hospital. Once their escape route is once their escape route is blocked, the others will have nowhere to run. And we can see Mushroom go, and she's so nervous. Mm. Um, and she's saying, "Should we really be here, Shroom? Did not the League of Villains attack you, eh? And that, that is Hononuke behind her, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and Midnight says, they've gotten too powerful. But Hononuke says, Midnight Sensei? Given how much power Shigaraki's got on his hands on, he's closer than ever to accomplishing his ultimate goal. It's not just... Oh, no, this is her, sorry. It's not just you kids who are in danger anymore. But don't worry. We just need your help for this initial stage. And no, it's not just uh, Mushroom and Jozu. Hi, okay. Kevin Ari's there. <laughs> He's on the initial push. And so is T- um, Tokiomi. I mean, Tokiomi's so versatile. It makes more sense. Mm-hmm. But there's all these people. And Kevin Ari, I know he's got that shooter ability. But what if he just gets scared and electrifies them all but <laughs> he's there mm-hmm. <laughs> and he carries on the next page and he is terrified and just going why am I on the front lines though I'm really missing those guys and then he just <laughs> screams he is not 
he's not thinking to himself, right, I, this is now the time I can prove myself, like, I can show all these pro heroes my skill. No, he's just screaming, Class A, I miss you. <laughs> Keeping um, it professional. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can see his scream as it echoes. We go over to the rest of the class and some of class um, B. And the first person that we have to mention is Setsuna Tokage, a.k.a. Lizzie <laughs> She's there in the corner <laughs> underneath Fanta Black. She looks great. She's just sitting there staring up. And then, I don't know, there's all these other people. They're not as important, but <laughs> Momo, Momo's there. Mina looks really nervous. Mm-hmm. I'm glad Jiro's at the front. That's pretty cool. Um, Mineta is pooping himself (laughs) Ojiro and Kirishima are stretching Sero looks like he's just woken up from a nap Um, Vine Girl Ibrahami uh, is there as well Sero we can see the beast from Class B I'm glad he's there he's so cool Um, Tetsu Tetsu Uh, and then that's, that's not Seth Rogen (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then also Sero's there as is behind Sero he's kind of turning around and looking at him there's a Siketsu High student I'm guessing by his hat and turning around who looks like a tiger and turning around to look at him I think is Twin Impact Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Aoyama bending over with a tummy ache (laughs) (laughs) that Siketsu High student have we seen him before Maybe he was a cameo, but I don't remember him. I mean, he's a great design, so I'm glad he's there. Yeah, I I don't remember. He might have been a cameo. I don't think he's a main character that we know of. Oh, no, he's definitely not a main character. Um, The woods where they're in, as a side note, it's really pretty. They've got beautiful foliage. Uh, Then we carry on with Ed Short, who says, we have their bases surrounded all over the country. Not even a mouse is getting away. Uh, Fat Gum is now done petting Sun Eater. He's like, huh? How do you figure out their whole meeting schedule, though? Um, and we cut to Endeavour going up to um, uh, the world's worst ever costumed detective, whose name I can't pronounce, to shoot. Oh, Gar- my best friend. Yeah. Gary, what's your pronunciation? That's really good. Sukachi. Sukachi. Thank you. Who is standing next to Sansa? Everyone's fa- everyone's real favourite police officer. <laughs> and Endeavour just walks past them both and says, "Was it him who figured out it was at this hospital? Where is he now? And what's he up to?" Um, and Suki says, "That's classified for now. Not that I, not that I know who you mean by him. We're all giving up a lot to preserve peace in this nation." And Endeavour just walks one sec <laughs> classified sure and present mike he he's spraying his mouth oh he's got to be spraying his mouth to make it all like moist and things get him ready for uh his voice battle i thought he was ready for a hot date tonight but <laughs> <laughs> i'd like it if while he was doing that this we saw um as our putting like uh drops in his eyes to keep them moist yeah. both, yeah. both moistening their face up yeah. Uh, Endeavour just walks straight through the hospital and he's thinking, I bol- bolstered our numbers just like you said, Hawks. Here we go. Here we go, indeed. Uh, we get a shot of the downtown scene. We see a couple of people, you see an ellipses, and one says, We always see someone. And we see this other character. He's like, Ah. It's like, Oh, wait, sorry. I messed that up. Let me start over. <laughs> I cannot read manga today. Um, we start off with the downtown area. We see a, somebody with the ellipses, and it says, Hey, have you noticed that there's no heroes around? We always see someone, and one of them points out, Ah, there's one, and who it, who is it but slide and go out of all <laughs> the people in town? <laughs> and we see slide and go. He's kind of confused. He's like, What's going on here? And we see somebody sliding in, and uh, is it Vlad King's name? No, I'm so bad at remembering. Uh, I'm so bad at remembering. Death Arms. 
Oh yeah, Death Arms, Death Sticks. Now that I remember that dumb little joke. <laughs> but yeah, we get Death Arms, and he's like, "You're the only one out of the loop, you backstabbing liberation nut." And poor Sliding Go, he's he's always the cannon fodder of the operation. But we go to the we go to the next panel, which is up in the mountains again, and we see Burning. They're moving in, and it says, "That's our cue. Move to your science sector and get those civilians out of there." And we see. Deku and company from the last chapter jumping in, and we see um, Endeavor, Endeavor's team, they're jumping in towards the, I'm guessing that was a hospital, yeah, they're jumping into the hospital, and we got one yeah. of the nurses saying, "What? what is this? Endeavor? Whoa! And we see a little excited kid, too, in that little corner. <laughs> <laughs> and we see, um, what is her name? Mandalay, uh, or? Is it Mandalay? It's yeah, like I think wild, it is. Pussy cats. Yeah, I guess it is. Yep. I think it is Mandalay. And she says, everyone get outside. There might be some fighting in here soon. And we see somebody says, Detective uh, Tsukuchi, <laughs> endeavor this way. Well, and From uh-huh. Mandalay's um, speech bubbles, I'm guessing she's telling everyone in the hospital or everyone in this room, because that's her quirk, isn't it? Yeah, she sort of like the telepathic thing. Yeah. Also, I did forget to notice that we get – hopefully we get to see Wash in action because he's in there in the background. Yeah. That shot. <laughs> but we cut to see uh, our, uh, Murata Shiga. He's uh, – we see him have like uh, – I thought that was a, uh, an exclamation point above his head, but I think it's just the lights on the ceiling. But he's saying to himself, all is running smoothly, Tomura. Smoothly. Tomura Shigaraki should be ready in just over a month. Ah, I can't wait. As he's calmly whistling, he starts coughing, and he says, somebody in the back, so you're the one, the man behind the Nomu, and offer one's right hand, and we see it's Endeavor with a very imposing shot. And at the very end of the chap, at the very end of the panel, we see these two dramatic shots of Endeavor, and uh, she uh, is like, the devil's minion, huh? You're finished. Or as I liked Nick's interpretation, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love that sound effect with it. Doom. Yeah, and that's the end of the chapter. The guy, the doctor's so shocked that he's his sweat is going upwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's so. Is that stuff? I'm sure that's stuff coming out of his nose as well. It's not just his like moustache. No, yeah. there's stuff coming out of his nose too. Yeah. <sighs> It makes it look like he's whistling out of his nose in one of the shots, too, I just noticed. Yeah, he might be, though. I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> I'm so glad that we see all the heroes, um, that they have got like some plan rather than just the end of last week where they're just all walking together. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. I hope there's people around like, the back entrances of the hospital and things. I'm sure, I'm sure there are. But so, what did we think of this chapter? Gary, is you first? Would you like to start with your thoughts? Um, I liked it. It's pretty. It's like the last chapter. It was exciting to see all the heroes coming together, and like the who's who, the where's Waldo of of what's going on. <laughs> then, um, seeing them prepare, preparing to preemptively strike the league. Well, not the League of Villains, but the Paranormal Liberation Front with the information from Hawks. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. I I don't know if either of you have seen Kill Bill, but like when I see somebody walking through the halls of a hospital whistling, that's all I think of. Oh, you think of that song? Yeah, <laughs> the nurse cell driver. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It- it was good to know that um, when the doctor says that Shigaraki has got Shigaraki, yeah, he's got one month left in his like, mm-hmm. uh, like his Nomu incubation period. Yeah, it makes me feel like that was misinformation that they are more prepared than the heroes thought they were because they think yeah. that they're preemptively striking a month ahead of time. Um, yeah. And in that case, like, I wonder if the doctor here is Toga, for one thing, because she might be a touch more 
expendable or it could even be a clone from twice mm. um but if it's the real doctor that would be pretty cool if something happened to him <laughs> because we've all been like waiting for that to happen yeah i think that's clever i think it makes sense that it would be um a clone or that it would be toga because surely they would want the doctor on their like their main plan which is i'm guessing shigaraki's nomu evolution rather than having him do these like hospital visits um mm-hmm. it would make sense that they would have a clone because then he could be at the liberation front i think that's what you're saying right <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought you yeah. So the group of heroes with um Edshaw and Mount Lady, they're outside the the main building for the Liberation Front, aren't they? Um I was trying to look where I they're saw that not, shot earlier. They're not in the hospital mm-hmm. with Endeavour and like um Azawa and everyone. They're outside, and the like. The rest of the kids are there to evacuate the hospital. But I think the third group, we see them outside of the main building. Mm-hmm. Have I got that right? Yeah, because we do get a shot of the, we do get a shot of the uh, paranormal liberation front, like mm-hmm. main building, and then we also get. I don't know who's saying it, but it says the enemy commanders are all attending a meeting inside mm-hmm. that building. So yeah, that that that's where they're going. Yeah, it was nice seeing the kids on the street being like, "Where are all the heroes? Oh, there's that one." Because I guess it. <laughs> I love when that we were slide all, and go. <laughs> yeah, when we were all like, "Oh no, there are no heroes there. They've all died." No, it's just that they're not. <laughs> they're not physically there. It's. I thought when we first read it, it was a flashback of someone saying like, "And then the heroes disappeared. They're just away for like a day or so." We think maybe they've gone for more, but. That's it. Yeah. Now that I think about that, yeah, because like we did get that. Now all the heroes were gone. Well, technically they're physically gone because they're doing something else. But I do like that. Just we get slide and go just being cannon fodder and the coffee boy doing all the runs and everything. So he's just like he's the most expendable member of the paranormal liberation front. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hawks got them a lot of information, didn't they? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like they know where all they know so much about the doctor. They know about the hospital. They know where all their like meetings are. He did a good job. It seems like. Yeah. As mm. far as we know. Yeah, that's true. I wonder uh, how he communicated that. It. What the information? Well, yeah, we'll think with about the, with the books, no. Right, but how would they, like, let them know that Slide and Go was the traitor, for example? Is there going to be, like, Slide and Go mentioned in the book? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you would have to find Slide or something. Like You'd, that. Yeah. <laughs> before, like, spies go out, they set up, like, a code. So it will be, like, the first – it could be, like, the first few letters down and then whatever on the other page of what, what he's folding. And it just, like, it just, like, spells it out. We don't know. Yeah, that sounds plausible. Yeah, but I like seeing the three different groups. I'm just so surprised that it's just <laughs> that it's just the four one A and one B students in the like going to the mansion and all the rest are evacuation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'd think, or oh, maybe they wouldn't want Baku go on the like the um the mansion because he could be too risky as like a live wire, but. Kevin Harvey's there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. But I really enjoyed the chapter. Does anyone have anything else that they wanted to add? I have a speculative thought. Um, that perhaps... Well, I was thinking maybe Denki was there because they have um, suspicion that he is the traitor and they wanted to keep him with more heroes. However, oh, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know that that would be true. I, like my feeling here is that he, um, might betray his group right here if he is the traitor. And mm-hmm. think about it too. Something really odd about him, like screaming here, like they're right outside, about to infiltrate this place, and here he is screaming in the middle of nowhere. They're gonna be able to hear that from the building. 
Uh, I don't think it's going to, I'm guessing that that's not going to be a plot point, but if it were, he would be alerting them that they're on their way. Like, yeah. Definitely. I mean, they, they're they quite far away, but it was definitely weird that he screamed. Like, if they had someone like Jiro yeah. there, they could, like, they'd be able, you would think they would be able to hear that. Well, with, like, how echoes work and stuff like that, and there's no, there's not really anything to um, disrupt <laughs> his voice, basically. Um, that's what I was thinking, anyway. I could be wrong. Would the trees not disrupt it? I don't know, because they're up on a on a um, cliff, and so when you think about like the cliche of people yelling into the Grand Canyon or, or what have you, and hearing the echoes back, it's usually like the, an elevated position like that. I don't so. think the group that Kaminari's on are on the cliff. The group of oh. um, the main like one A and B group, they're on a the cliff because we see them jump out. But I think the group Kaminari's in, they're just like in the woods, because as we yeah, oh, as we go right. to them, they're, like, looking through the trees. I'm guessing they're there. And also, if you were trying to sneak up on a mansion, you probably wouldn't have a large group just staring over right. a cliff. <laughs> yeah. They probably don't really care too much about the element of anyway, because they feel like they're outnumbering everybody. Oh, I hope they care about the element of surprise. When you're dealing with lives, there's no, <laughs> there's no arrogance. <laughs> I agree. I know. I'm just trying to think in shonen terms. Yeah. <laughs> the right. other thing that's kind of weird on the top of um, page number seven, where they're talking about that work quirk is the one to be feared, but the one who wields it is in the hospital. Oh, so they're talking about Johnny there. Okay, that makes sense. Because we know he's the one that does like the tar looking teleportation that they kind of show. Yeah. But Johnny, I'm glad Johnny's not, well, Johnny wouldn't be with him. Ignore that. I was talking nonsense. Does anyone have anything else that they'd like to add? I think I'm good. Okay, cool. Then we have an email to read out. So this is from James. Thank you. This is from John, sorry. (laughs) Um, And he said, hello, been listening to you for over a year, been enjoying your content. Wish I sent this email last week. But who would win between Mr. Compress and then he in brackets, I like this, he's put with or without both hands. <laughs> so it's Mr. Compress versus Gentle. And then this is good as well. In brackets, with or without the love boost. Keep up the good work and go beyond. Plus, I'm sure. <laughs> who would win? Let's count Mr. Compress with just his one hand because he, he presently has just the one. And we haven't seen him with, like, a cool robot arm. Um, mm. And Gentle and Labrava, I feel like they're all the time. They're, they should be together all the time, even though they're separated by prison now. I wonder if they write each other messages through the prison system. Oh, I would hope so. <laughs> That'd be cute. Um, yeah, so I think, Miss, mm, I think Mr. Compress would win. Yeah, I was gonna say I think Mr. Compress would win just because he could he wouldn't even fight it, he would just do a magic show and Gentle would be impressed. <laughs> I don't think uh, it takes a hu- it would take a huge amount to be gentle, no, Gary. I was gonna say like Mr. Compress could like lift up his sleeve and be like, Nothing up my sleeve and there's literally nothing up his sleeve because <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like he would target La Brava, um, and compress her, and that could be pretty easy to do, um, given, unless, you know, Gentle's really the one to be wary of, but if he ha- he doesn't have the love boost, then he's pretty weak, comparatively, so I, I don't know, I think compress as well. Yeah, we're all being a bit stingy on gentle <laughs> yeah well you know a preteen or not a preteen but a teenager with not a ton of experience defeated him pretty easily mm. um it's, it's really hard to say because unfortunately we've not seen that much of mr compress in like an actual fight right and 
when he like ambushed the students at the camp training, like he was pretty um t- he was pretty intimidating. Like he he took them on pretty quick and um, yeah. accomplished it. The um, same the same with Snatch as well. Right, yeah. And, and too, like he can selectively like choose what limbs to or body parts to compress, so he he could like really take somebody out pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. Just take out a vital organ. Um, I was thinking too, like of this r- lately, like with La Brava, like are her powers pretty similar to like the booster drug, except you know conditional, of course, with her mm-hmm. having to love somebody. And with, mm-hmm. like, Aerie, like, how her DNA was being used to create the, um, the cure Erasure. to oh, quirks, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, if LaBrava's quirk could be used, prob- most likely it could be used to create a booster. Yeah, that's true. Either that or an aphrodisiac. <laughs> Two very different routes you've gone there, Gary. <laughs> Yeah, um, but thank you for the uh, email. I feel a bit guilty that we've all kind of slighted gentle, but it is what it is. Maybe as the anime goes on, we'll we'll all change our minds when we see him in animated action. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure if Jay was here, he'd probably go the gentle route. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> loves his gentle. He loves his gentle. Oh. Okay. I just can't wait for the scene where the tea kind of splashes LeBron's face <laughs> to get animated. Oh, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> I was thinking, too, like, it's interesting pairing those together in the email that we just got because they're both the gentleman figures. So I was thinking instead of, like, a fight, they they could have, like, a gentleman off. <laughs> oh. I'd <laughs> like it if they went, like, old... Victorian room, just like slapping each other with fish and challenging them to a duel with fish. <laughs> that was a thing, wasn't it? You'd slap someone with a fish. I just remember it being a Monty Python skit. Oh, but... I re- I thought it was just like a white glove or whatever. Like, You're uh, right. It is a white glove. I've somehow <laughs> taken Monty fish, Python yeah. for genuine history. That's what I was going to say. I used Monty Python's Holy Grail when we did English history in school, so it served me pretty well, <laughs> to be honest. Probably more relevant. Yeah. Slapping people with fish sounds very Muppety, too. <laughs> okay, so thank you both very much for joining us this week. So where can people find you, Gary? You can find me at Wrath of Giraffes on Twitter. And James? You can find me at that one welder guy on Twitter. You can also find my podcast, uh, the Kicking Stones podcast, which is a Dr. Stone manga review podcast at Dr. Stone Pod on Twitter. And also you can find another podcast that I'm doing. It's called Weeb Jammin', which we did our first episode yes yesterday off of uh, Megalobox. So that should be out soon, too, as well. And you can follow that Twitter page at Jammin' Weeb. Also, Gary was on that episode as well. So mm-hmm. so it's worth listening to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just kidding. Gary is we the had... glue that holds everything together. Whatever. <laughs> no, it was fun, though. I, I think people enjoy listening. Yeah. Cool. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Choppers Antlers. You can find the podcast on Twitter at MHA Pod. And you can email us um, with myheropod at gmail.com. And I'm glad we're ending because my voice is going. Don't be a turd and need disciplinary action. Instead, go beyond. Plus Plus Ultra. Ultra. I thought you oh, both weren't going to participate and be like, that's terrible. No, that was good. Yeah. I thought of a better one, though. Like, as soon as you said that. Wait, wait I want to hear it, though. Uh, How rude. A better no, one. Sorry. It's, but that's it was so inspired by up. you. It was inspired by you. Go don't on, be a, Don't be a go-be turd, but go beyond. <laughs> <laughs>